Hello my friends, I am so happy you're here with me. So, after my last explosion of color and images in my last video, I was thinking that I would do something cute and simple and that I would use lawn fawn stamps to do it. You see, I collect lawn fawn when I find them on second hand and I want to show that you can art journal with images and brands normally used for card making. But as far as my plan for clean, cute and simple, I can confidently say that I failed. I am happy with my page and it's cute, but far from clean and simple. I don't think I have it in me right now to hold back. But let's dive into this explosion and enjoy the journey. So, to start I stamped all my images several times on Bristol smooth paper and decided to use my zig markers to color. Beforehand I spent a good while picking out my color combination and have all the combination at hand when I color. For the little fairy houses I use four shades of brown, using my lightest brown to map out where I will place my shadows and then I go over the image with three darker shades before I use the lightest to blend the colors together one last time. For the roof I used three shades of green but as my process moved along I changed my mind and at the end the houses I use will have purple and blue roofs. I use one orange and three shades of yellow for the windows to light them and make it look like someone is home. I use a set of koi watercolor markers to give this fairy a skin tone and four brown sig markers for her hair. I give her a purple dress, yellow accessories and light blue wings. The second fairy gets the same skin tone, hair, light blue wings, purple accessories and a pink dress. Most of my characters have scarves and other accessories because the scene I make will be an early spring scene. This last fairy gets the same skin tone, hair and wings, but accessories in pink and a yellow dress. So I have fairies and a fairy house and now we move on to the little cute dragon. I color the dragon in pink, going from the darkest to the lightest shade. I color his horns and wings in purple and give him a little blue scarf. For this little happy unicorn I use three shades of blue, then I color the mane and tail in purple and the horn in yellow. Thank you. 
Next, I'm coloring the skunks and for the bottom part of their bodies and tails, I use three shades of grey and a hint of black. Black on its own is too flat, so anytime I color something that I want to be black, I use mostly grey to give it more dimension. For the top part of my skunks, I use three shades of cool greys and some pink for the nose and ears. These little bats are from a Halloween set, but when has seasons ever stopped me from using extra images? I color the bats with the same black and grey I used on the skunks, but I change out my lightest grey to a light purple to give them a different color tone. I color this tiny butterfly in yellow shades and for these three little birds I used blue, pink and purple combinations on the birds and their accessories. Finally, I color this heart garland in pink. For the background, I picked out a bunch of Nuvo Shimmer powders in many vibrant colors like purple, blue, pink, orange and green. I also have a panel of thick watercolor paper, I think it's 350 milligrams and it measures 7 and 3 quarter inches by 7 and 3 quarters. I spray the front and back with water and start carefully tapping out the powders in rows for each color. When I activate the powders with water, it is like magic how they wick out and explode into colors. I add extra water where the powder has piled up, but I try to let the powders work without too much interference, just tipping the panel a few times. And then I put the panel under a couple of heavy books to dry. So, my panel is dry and I bring out a little cute heart stencil that I won in a giveaway at my favorite YouTuber, The Handy Scandy. I also bring out Nuvo Frosted Petal, Glacier Paste and a palette knife. I stir the paste and push it through those little hearts and then I move my stencil and do the same a few times. When the paste dries, it will remind you of foiling, with its shimmering, shiny texture. This time I chose a few sentiments from different lawn fawn sets. I usually struggle with sentiments. Those positive quotes out there make me feel like they don't apply to me or my life. But I decided to go with several sentiments that I felt I needed to say to myself and perhaps to you. I use WOW's Bright White Super Fine Embossing Powder and stamp all the sentiments in white pigment ink on black cardstock and heat emboss with white powder. Mm -hmm. 
I cut my sentiments into thin strips and now it's time to put this page together. Although I don't use any foam tape this time, I will layer my images to give the scene some depth and dimension. I start by gluing down a longer branch and a smaller growing from it before I glue down a fairy house on that branch. I continue gluing branches and houses, taking my time to get the layers of images just right. When my branches and houses are in place, I glue down a sentiment strip saying, you make me feel sentimental, and then I glue down my skunks and give the one skunk a bow tie. Next, I glue down my hanging bats and a sentiment saying, hang in there. And then I glue down the unicorn, the flying bat, and give that bat a bow tie as well. I continue with my three large fairies, followed by two of those cute birds. From the Halloween set, I also stamped, colored and glued down two spiders in happy colors next to my bats. I glued down that darling dragon and then I glued down a sentiment strip saying, need a hug. And in my mind, all of my critters seem to want a hug. Then I glue down the last sentiment strip saying, you're a rare find, next to the unicorn and fairy house. I glue down a bunch of mushrooms with the last winter snow still on them, and I also add a few mini fairies here and there, and my last little image is another spider looking happy next to the unicorn. I almost forgot that I gave the skunk one of those heart garlands and also gave him a butterfly friend. The last thing I do on this page is to bring out my Black Dilutions 8x8 journal, flip through the pages and find a place for my panel and glue it down. And now, this mixed media lawn fawn art journal page is finished. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching my videos. You're all amazing. Until the next time, happy crafting.